Throughout history, men have murdered women, sometimes in a fit of jealous passion, sometimes for the sake of expediency. Henry VIII had two of his wives beheaded for alleged adultery. Men have also murdered women for no apparent reason. Over a five-month period in 1888, Jack the Ripper butchered five prostitutes in London's East End. This program investigates three cases from the 20th century. In the first, a murderer who committed his crimes over five years. In the second, a killer who took all his victims in just one night. And in the third, a killer who slaughtered his victims after a break-in. Today, Notting Hill is one of London's most fashionable areas, and Ruston Mews is a prime address. But 50 years ago, Notting Hill was run down, and Ruston Mews was known as Rillington Place, the scene of at least eight murders. At the time, 10 Rillington Place was the scene of the worst mass murder in British history. The ground floor was occupied by John Christie, a clerk, and his wife, Ethel. Above them lived Timothy Evans, an illiterate truck driver, his wife, Beryl, and their baby, Geraldine. In March 1950, Evans was hanged after he was found guilty of strangling Beryl and Geraldine. Chief witness for the prosecution was John Christie. He sobbed as the judge sentenced his neighbor to death. Timothy and Beryl Evans had moved into Rillington Place in March 1948. Geraldine was born in October. Beryl had decided she didn't want any more children. The following year, she found herself pregnant again. She confided her unhappiness to Christie. To her astonishment, Christie told her he could perform an abortion. Despite the fact that backstreet abortions were highly risky and illegal, Beryl and her husband agreed. Returning home from work one evening, Evans was confronted by Christie with bad news. The abortion hadn't worked. Evans rushed upstairs to find Beryl lying dead in their bedroom. Christie then told the distraught Evans that he would dispose of the body. Christie also said he would take baby Geraldine to some friends who would care for her and warned Evans to keep his mouth shut. Evans left London and returned to his home in South Wales, where quite inexplicably, he told the local police that he'd disposed of his wife. 10 Rillington Place was searched. The remains of a young woman and a baby were found hidden in an outside washroom. Both had been strangled. Charged with their murder, Evans appeared at the Old Bailey in January 1950. In the dock, he impressed neither judge nor jury. After just two days, he was found guilty and sentenced to death. In court, Evans blamed Christie, who, supported by his wife, denied the allegation. Over the next few years, life at 10 Rillington Place returned to normal. But beneath the facade was a terrible secret. In mid-December 1952, Ethel Christie disappeared. Her husband said she was staying with relatives. Three months later, he packed up and said he was joining her. Instead, he checked into a seedy hotel in a rundown part of London. On the 24th of March, 1953, a new tenant began stripping the kitchen walls of the Christie's old flat. He found what appeared to be an alcove and opened it up. Inside was the torso of a semi-naked woman. Behind the first body were two more. 
All three had been strangled. Police then pulled the house apart and found Ethel Christie's corpse under the floorboards in the front room. The search then moved into the garden, where the remains of two more women were dug up. As news of the discoveries at 10 Rillington Place became public, Christie left his hotel and began wandering the streets of London. Police had released his description and began a nationwide search. It wasn't long before Christie was found. In June 1953, the trial of the century began. The courtroom heard how Christie had lured prostitutes to his flat, then rendered them unconscious using domestic coal gas. Then they were strangled. He had sex with his victims either just before or just after they died. As a teenager, the court heard, Christie had been rejected by women as sexually inadequate and had developed the urge to dominate women. The result of his trial was a foregone conclusion. And on the 15th of July, Christie was hanged. Christie's guilt now exonerated Timothy Evans. Yet it was not until the 18th of October 1966 that Evans was granted a posthumous pardon. Three years later, Britain abolished the death penalty for murder. Christie had planned each of his murders with great precision, committing them over a five-year period. 